It was my job to find out what caused the devastating explosion on Hinkley Road on the 25th of February 2018, during which five people lost their lives. Was it an appalling accident or was it something far more sinister? Sifting through the debris and working with experts from a range of services, it became clear that the explosion and the subsequent fire was caused by an accelerant being ignited. The accelerant was petrol, but experts were able to show that it had been mixed with another flammable liquid. That hadn't happened by accident. Someone had distributed a significant quantity of petrol and another liquid, which I believe to be barbecue fuel, across the entire basement of the building. This to cause the explosion and subsequent intense fire. The four people who had been in the flat above the supermarket and who died in the explosion were utterly innocent victims. Mary Ragabeer, her sons Shane and Sean, and Shane's girlfriend Leah. But the picture that began to emerge about the fifth person killed was very different. We were told that Victoria of Lever had only started work at the supermarket the day before. This information came from the owner of the shop, Aram Curd. But inquiries showed that Victoria had in fact known Curd for many months through her boyfriend, Arkan Ali, who had bought a supermarket in Coventry from Curd the previous year. Extensive investigations were carried out at the scene, in the northwest of England and in many other parts of the UK. We conducted detailed analysis of mobile phone records used by various individuals and we spent hours and hours examining CCTV footage. From the evidence gathered, I formed a view that a plot had been hatched to set fire to the shop and fraudulently claim against an overinflated insurance policy set to benefit from about £300,000. A month before the explosion, Victoria and Ali had visited an insurance brokers in Oldham, Lancashire, but their attempts to persuade the broker to provide them with cover for the shop in Hinkley Road were unsuccessful. A week later, this time joined by a friend of Ali, Hawker Hassan, the pair visited a different Oldham insurance company, but again without success. Finally, with insurance cover in place, they began to execute their plan. Four days before the explosion, Victoria and Ali drove to Leicester in his white Audi. It turned into Carlisle Street shortly before 12 noon. Curd entered the supermarket a short while later, and CCTV cameras showed all three in the rear yard inspecting the rubbish. Next, all three were caught on camera entering a branch of B&Q where they bought smoke alarms. A short while later, someone bought four litres of white spirits from Wilkinson's. Minutes later, the group made their way back to the supermarket. Two days later, Ali, Hassan and Victoria set off from Coventry towards Leicester, stopping at a petrol station where Hassan filled up a container with 26 litres of unleaded petrol. The car they were driving was a diesel. This fuel container was later found in the rubble of the explosion. Having arrived in Leicester, I believe that the canister was transferred to Curd's VW Golf, which was later seen reversing onto the pavement outside the supermarket, in order, I believe, to discreetly transfer the petrol into the shop. CCTV then shows a gloved hand move the angle of a camera at the rear of a neighbouring property. I believe this was done in order that the offenders could take the petrol straight down the basement steps without being seen. On the day of the explosion, the white Audi drove back to Leicester from Coventry and shortly after lunch, Victoria walked to the supermarket. She was in mobile phone contact with Ali, Hassan and Curd, who spent the afternoon in the city centre, putting the finishing touches to their plans. At some point in these discussions, it appears that there was a disagreement between the three men. We suspect this was sparked by the suggestion that Victoria should die in the explosion partly because she knew too much and partly to increase the share of profits for the three men. With an hour to go before the explosion, Curd rejoined Victoria in the shop and Ali and Hassan were seen in the area of Hinkley Road, waiting for the cover of darkness. Cameras then spotted Ali walking towards the back of the supermarket at around 6.30pm, where we believed he was making the final preparations for the fire and cameras picked him up again, leaving the rear of the shop just before 7pm. By that stage, someone had lowered the shutters at the entrance to the premises, 
a strange thing to do when the shop normally stayed open until 10pm. Minutes later, with Victoria now alone in the shop, the explosion happened. Ali and Hassan left the scene in the Audi, heading back to Coventry. Kurd, seen behaving strangely in the alleyway near the explosion, emerged onto the main street, presenting himself as an innocent and injured victim to the police and the following day to the media. Victoria did not plan her own death, but she had played a part in the planning of the fire and the subsequent claim against insurance. Had she been alive, she would have been arrested and charged. Four entirely innocent people died in the events of the 25th of February. My heart goes out to them and to their loved ones. My thoughts are also with those that were injured in this terrible crime. I can only hope that the verdicts of the jury will bring some small comfort to them, knowing those who took their lives will be locked away for many years to come.